when I was growing up, we, we never even thought about the race relations, to be honest. I didn't. I don't think anybody in my high school did. I went to an all-white high school. Uh, I lived in an all-white neighborhood, and directly across the street from us was an all-black neighborhood. And in the summers, we'd all go up to the local elementary school and play basketball because it was sitting right between the two. So much of the events of the civil rights movement happened before my lifetime. But for whatever reason, anything that happens before we're alive seems like ancient history. Who's gonna do it if I don't? Sick and tired of feeling sick and tired of this ain't her gun they say my words might get me fired. This ain't heaven help us. What a terrifying time to raise our voices. This ain't heaven help us. But see, I'm not left with many more choices. This ain't heaven help us. I gotta put it into action, action, action. Doing it A to Z until I set myself free. Action, oh, action. I don't care if you refuse to see. The school year is 1966. The uh, state of Tennessee integrated the high schools, and so all of a sudden now everybody's being thrown together. And so uh, Pearl, in that first season, they went unbeaten. They were in basketball. They just ran through everybody. The ball, all five starters dunked the ball, and you know you sit there and think, "Wow, what, what? These are wonderful athletes." And Perry Wallace was one of the best ones there. So it, all of a sudden, it just it turned. It took us a hundred years to turn it, but when it got turned, it was turned quickly. One of the reasons he didn't quit is because there was no guarantee that there would be a, a next Perry Wallace. You know, uh, when he was in high school, and uh, Pearl High School was playing in the state tournament, they were concerned that if they kept winning, they would get kicked out of the tournament because that they thought that the TWSWA didn't want this black school to win the tournament. I had Vanderbilt season tickets back in those days, and went to every game over there. He was the toast of the city. I mean, everybody loved Perry Wallace. I, I can't say everybody because evidently he got a lot of hate mail. I think he was kind of the darling in Nashville, and I think most people that didn't hate, most people embraced him, and, and he was a great basketball player. Made all the SEC teams and all that, and Vanderbilt had good seasons. But then there was so much turmoil internally within him because of the way he was treated an isolated Vanderbilt didn't know that part of it. I, I, I treated so bad. The, the, the fact that you know he leads his high school team to state championships, uh, gets recruited uh, uh, throughout the country. You know he turns down an opportunity to maybe play at UCLA for John Wooden uh, in the midst of, of UCLA's run of national championships. Uh, he really had a chance to uh, go wherever he, ever he wanted, and he chooses to stay at Vanderbilt because he wanted the education that Vanderbilt offered, and he wanted his parents to have a chance to see him play. Really, everything he does throughout his life is a conscious choice on his part. Every, every step uh, he makes, every action he chooses, he's doing it with purpose, with intention. Uh, and he always had this ability to see a bigger picture and to understand how important his day-to-day -day life was in that bigger picture. On the road at Mississippi State when he was a freshman. And you could imagine how difficult it was for the first black player in the SEC to play a game uh, in Mississippi in the 1960s. And the... Um, racism that he encountered, the uh, cat calls and death threats and that sort of thing in the first half of the game was so uh, profound that he held hands with one of his teammates at halftime, which you wouldn't normally expect, you know, tough guy athlete to do.
uh, before road trips, he would imagine, what's the worst thing that could happen to me? In his mind, it was really to get shot while he was playing a basketball game. Prior to all that, I had no idea what was going on with the, with the black kids in Nashville. And then when you look back on it, you're like, gosh, what deplorable kind of treatment that they received, and especially what Perry Wallace received when he traveled all over the South playing basketball. Well, you know, I thought he was welcomed well. I thought the city, like I say, I thought the city embraced him, but you listen to it and the church, he went to a church right across the street from Vanderbilt. And when he got there, they asked him not to come back. And you think, how could that happen? You know, so evidently he wasn't embraced. Not every institution in Nashville opened the doors to him, let's put it that way. Nor in the Southeastern Conference did they open. They, you know, they'd go into restaurants. But I played minor league baseball for four years in the mid 60s. And uh, we were playing, I was the, in the Carolina League. We went into a restaurant in Greenville, South Carolina, and we all go in as a team. We had three or four uh, African-American guys on our baseball team, and they were denied the right to eat in that restaurant. And we had already gotten our food and everything. We got up and walked out as a show of solidarity for our teammates. Not, not a whole lot. He was, I mean, other schools begin to bring some black players in, but there wasn't a huge movement to uh, integrate the SEC. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, there was a, a lot of schools that didn't take players in. But no, it wasn't It wasn't open the doors and let's get as many good ba black basketball players in. I, I don't sense that. Even the football team had some black players on there. So it was slow coming, but somebody opened that door. Pierre Wallace had the courage to walk through that door and endure a lot, a lot of bad things. So it took a while. Um, Auburn had the second African-American player. And back then, freshmen didn't play on the varsity. They, were, they had freshman teams and varsity teams. And so um, Perry played against Henry Harris, who played at Auburn, was a sophomore on the varsity, Perry's senior year. That was the only African-American player he ever played against. So. Most of the schools didn't really start to recruit black players until after Perry was gone. Um, Alabama uh, was the first school to really do it. And in the, by about 72, they had the first all-black starting lineup in SEC basketball. And they won the SEC championship three years in a row. Um, became kind of the dominant team. And then things started to change pretty quickly in football and basketball by the late 70s, uh, mid-80s when people like Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal and Dominique Wilkins in basketball or um, Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker in football. In high school, his best move was a slam dunk, but they banned the slam dunk while he was playing in college. He couldn't dunk or it was a technical foul. And yet he saved uh, his last basket of his college career was a slam dunk, an illegal dunk and it was in the last minute of the game, and the refs let it go for some reason. They let it count. And he said that this dunk was really symbolic to him. It was sort of his form of um, protest on the way out after a difficult experience that he had had. So he got a big standing ovation after the game. Uh, Vandy won. But the way Perry is, if there was ever a movie about Perry, like that could be easy, like the ending. His last game, he has this big dunk. It's against the rules dedicates it to his mom, and there's this big ovation. But um, he said that he had this uneasy feeling in his stomach after the game because there was still a lot of work yet to be done, and that um, the African-American players that would come behind him needed to know how difficult this was. And so he gave a big interview to the Tennessean the next day where he told the truth about his experience. He was um, kicked out of a church. He was called the N-word by professors. He was hit in the face on road games. I mean, it was not easy in any way at all. And a lot of people didn't know this. He felt people need to know what this was all about. So he gave this interview knowing, however, that a lot of people in Nashville didn't want to hear this. They wanted just to remember this great game. So the story runs on the front page of the paper the next day. And I talked to the people that worked at the newspaper, and they said that the phones rang off the hook, and it was Vandy fans calling to complain about the story and criticizing Perry and wishing him good riddance out of Nashville. And so he said he knew he was writing his ticket out of town. And so uh, he moved up to Philadelphia and 
He hasn't ever lived here since. And I didn't understand it, to be honest. Uh, I just thought, wow, he, he went through Vanderbilt and everybody loved him. And, and really didn't understand it for a number of years after that. And then you begin to hear rumors of things going on and things that happened. And then you read that book and that book just kind of smacks you in the face. I thought the book had a great ending and a great message. But as I read it, I had some real emotions about everything that went on back in those days. And I still respect him. I mean, he is a giant of a man that is dignified and, uh, and, and just, just a good fellow. You could tell by, that he cares. And he cares for people of all races. And uh, I think that's evident. Uh, when you see him, he, he almost wows you when he walks in the room. Uh, He's an impressive figure. And that's what Perry said about pioneering in general, or his concern that he would get hurt, is that it's all unknown when you're the first. There's nothing to base your perceptions on. You're the first person going through this. And Tyler's bound in jail Had no money for to go their bail Keep your eyes on the prize Hold on Hold on Hold on, Hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize Hold on began to shout, it was popped open and all walked out, keep your eyes on the prize, hold on, hold on, hold on, keep your eyes on the prize, hold on, well the only chains we can stand are the chains of hand in hand. 